there's really nothing that complements a red lipstick more than glowy skin, neutral, fresh eyes, and beautiful lashes. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nikki LaRose, and in case you can't tell, today's tutorial is gonna be all about this red lip. To start this makeup look, I'm gonna go straight into my foundation, and for that, I'll be using the Milk Makeup Sunshine Skin Tint. This has SPF 30 in it. It's more like a tinted moisturizer. It's super glowy on the skin, and it really looks like skin. Like you can see your skin through this, if that makes sense. It doesn't have a lot of coverage. And I think that's exactly what looks beautiful if you're going to wear a red lip, especially like a bright red lip. This will just give it a really nice compliment. It's not too much coverage, so it's not gonna look too heavy with the red lip. So I'll be taking this and pumping a good amount out of the top of it. So as usual, I have my skin prep on, like my serums, and I already have an SPF on as well. So I'm just gonna put this on top of my prepped skin and then buff it in. So I've played around with this skin tint a couple times and I've tried it with like a damp beauty blender. I've tried it with a smaller flat brush, but I think the best brush that I've tried with this so far is the Real Techniques. This is the buffer brush or buffing brush. And it just, it really helps to work it into my skin rather than have it just kind of sit on top. And I think that's what the initial problem I had with it when I first applied it, I applied it with a beauty sponge and it kind of just made it just sit on top of my skin, which was not really flattering. So now that I've buffed it on with this brush, I really, really like the formula and I think it looks beautiful on and really effortless and just glowy. Also, don't mind my self-tanning mistake that I made last night. Last night I thought it was a good idea while I was super tired to wash my face. And then I thought I looked really pale, so I decided to spray on like a self-tanning face mist. Like, it looks like a setting spray that you just like mist on your face. It's from, I think it's from Saint Tropez. It's really good, I love it. But I don't recommend you using it late at night. It wasn't even late at night, I was just exhausted from the work week. So I sprayed on my face and then I decided to sit back down on the couch to relax and watch TV and then I fell asleep. I must've fallen asleep like holding my face like this because I woke up with the weirdest self-tanning blotchy spot on my cheek. So I don't recommend doing that, but I do recommend the self tanner. I'll, I'll try to link it in my description box so you guys can try it. Moving on to concealer, I'll be using the Milk Makeup Sunshine Under Eye Tint Plus Brighten. This is another product that I didn't, I didn't love when I first tried it. And then I went back to it and I tried it in a different way. Like I used a different technique, like the one I'm gonna show you. And I love it. It feels so nice under my eye. I, under my eye is like the only place where I get kind of dry and this feels really nice and like hydrating, but it still gives me coverage. And so that's actually the reason why I didn't think I liked it at first because when I first put it on, I just felt like I didn't get the coverage that I wanted. And if you know me and you, you, know, you watch my channel, like you know that I want coverage under my eye. So you have to like click it up and Again, I don't really like the applicator. It, it's not for me personally. I can see how it's like really easy for some people and I, I can see the appeal of it, but I don't really like it. I feel like it's a little messy. But anyway, it's a really nice formula and the best way to apply it in my opinion that I've found is just patting it in with a beauty sponge. This one is from e.l.f. Cosmetics. This is that $6 makeup sponge that I use in my drugstore makeup tutorial. Each end is pointed, so it really makes it easy to get in there under your eye and really blend it in. So I'll be using that to tap it in. I'm just taking it across towards my temple. That'll help give me like a little lift and like snatch up with my eye. It's my favorite way to apply my concealer. And then getting that inner, the tear duct of my eye where it's also, you know, on the darker side. So I'm gonna let this side dry down just a little bit while I go into this side. I 
Same thing, I'm just gonna bring it straight out and across towards my temple. Again, just disregard that self-tanning blotch on my cheek. I'm gonna go in later on and, and try to cover it up, but I'm really not too concerned about it. Okay, just lightly tapping that in. And then whatever's left over, which is a really small amount, I'm just gonna take it. So I'm just lightly tapping this concealer on top of my eyelid just to cancel out that pigmentation and to brighten it just a little bit, not as much as I typically would do, so. And then whatever's left over on my sponge, I'm just going to tap between my, between my brows. Bring down the bridge of my nose in a very, very natural way. And while this dries down just a little bit more, I'm gonna go in with my contour. And I'm gonna bring back a cheap favorite of mine. This is the e.l.f. Cosmetics Putty Bronzer in Honey Drip. Again, this is also what I use in my drugstore makeup tutorial. This is only like six bucks as well. And it's just such a great sheer natural product. Using a Zoeva 128 Cream Cheek Brush. These are great, it has an angle on it. So it's gonna be really nice and easy when you're trying to like get in and like sculpt your cheeks. But I'll be using this and hitting the very top of my forehead along my hairline. And you can see like this product is almost undetectable. It's just so sheer and easy to blend on. It's like foolproof. You can't mess up applying this cream bronzer. Okay, so just a nice little thin layer just to give my forehead some more warmth, even though I probably don't need it because of that self-tanner that I put on last night. And then I'm gonna hit my cheeks just a little bit and stamp it on. Bring it under my jaw. And switching my brush, I'll be using a number 27 brush from Sephora and dipping into that same cream bronzer. And I'll be using this brush to just warm up, not contour my nose, but just warm up my nose and to bring balance to the rest of my face. If you leave out your nose, if you're doing any like cream bronzers or powder bronzers and you leave out your nose, it just, it, you leave out a lot of cohesiveness that you could have by just bringing that product down your nose as well. Like I'm not trying to like chisel my nose and make it look really thin. I'm just trying to bring balance and cohesiveness to my entire look by bringing my bronzer to the center of my face. So I guess my point in saying that is, even if you're someone who doesn't like the look or doesn't feel like they need to contour their nose, like I don't feel like I need to contour my nose at all, but I notice when I don't bring my cream bronzer, if I'm using it that day, if I, I don't bring it to my nose, I just don't have as much balance to my makeup look. And so for that reason alone, I definitely suggest Bring it even just a small amount on your nose, just to, to balance out your look. And I'm gonna bring it straight up towards my brow. Cause I do like that look. I love connecting my cream bronzer or powder bronzers up towards my brow. And I'm gonna go back to my concealer real quick and just do a little highlighting on the top of my chin, which I forgot to do earlier, and just tap it in. And since I do want a little more coverage, I'm gonna dot on just a little more of that concealer.
and pat it in. Time for blush. I'll be using the Huda Beauty Cheeky Tint. This is a blush stick in the color Perky Peach. I got all these in PR and I was so excited. And I put them all in my makeup kit, except for this one. I just kept one for myself, but these are so pretty on. They're super long wearing. I don't think they're the easiest to blend, but they're very beautiful on the skin. Like I love the way they look on. They're so, so pretty. So my favorite method of using these and applying them is to warm it up first on the top of my hand. And then grabbing a 135 Petite Face Definer from Zoeva. This is just a really dense, rounded brush. I'm gonna use that and work that cream blush into my brush. And this color is gonna be so pretty paired with a bright red lip because it's not gonna steal the focus. It's not gonna steal the show. It's just gonna be a nice, like, pretty soft peachy tone that's gonna really complement that red. So looking straight ahead, I'm going to tap it onto my cheeks. And bring it nice and high up towards my temple. And I'm not buffing it, I'm not like being too aggressive, I'm just really pressing it on and tapping it onto my cheeks. And then with whatever's left over, which is a really small amount, I'm going to tap it on the very top of my nose, like the bridge of my nose. So same method, I'm just going to work that into my brush and then tap it onto my cheeks. Okay, so blush is on. I'm gonna sweep a little bit across my forehead. Just for that little healthy bit of color. And then grabbing one of my favorite loose setting powders. This one is from One Size Beauty. It's the Translucent Loose Setting Powder. I'll be taking this to set my under eye concealer. But before I do that, I'm gonna grab my beauty sponge one more time and make sure that I buff out any creases under my eye before I set them. I will never make that mistake self-tanning my face again late at night because this is like, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. So I'm gonna take my same beauty sponge. It is damp, which is one of the best ways to apply an under eye powder in, in my opinion, especially because if you have drier skin under your eye, this just feels so much more comfortable. Like it's a more comfortable way to apply it, if that makes sense. Just try it and you'll see what I'm talking about. But I'm gonna take my sponge and dip into my loose powder that I poured out. And then go directly under my eye. And then a little bit up towards my temple. I'm not trying to take away too much glow around the rest of my cheeks. I'm really just trying to focus this as much as I can under my eyes where I need my makeup to be set. And then taking a little bit more, I'm going to like strategically set the rest of my face. And what I mean by strategically is I don't wanna have powder all over. That defeats the whole purpose of using the products that I use, which are super glowy. I wanna keep my glow, but I want to calm it down and minimize it in certain areas that we don't necessarily want to glow. Like I don't wanna glow right here. So I'm gonna take my powder and push it into this little corner above my lip and on the side of my mouth. And then we're gonna take a teeny bit just under my lip. But in the center of the forehead right here, if you leave that too shiny, too glowy, it could just, 
it's just too much. It could just look too much like a disco ball. So I'm just gonna cut down some of that shine. So that way we have like a nice balance between super glowy and powdered. Okay. And then whatever's left over, I'm gonna blend out any creasing that happened on my eyelid before we go in with our eyeshadow. So time for eyeshadow. I have been loving this palette from Fenty Beauty. This is actually, it's a really cool idea. It's a face and eye bronzer highlighter palette. Using my blending brush from the Morphe collaboration with Makeup by Ariel. I love this blending brush. I'll be dipping into that first light shade. So I love this shade. It's super neutral. I'm just going to blend this across my crease. It's not the most impactful color, especially like I'm sure on camera, it's not showing up as much at all. But in person, it's just a really pretty soft neutral shade. It's a great, great transitional shade for, let's say you're doing like a bright eyeshadow look or like a smoky look. This is a great transitional shade that you just kind of lay down first and then it goes with any other color under the sun. So just softly blending that across my crease. And this whole eye makeup look that we'll be doing is just, it's meant to be very soft. And then switching to a Sephora 19 brush to dip into that next color over here. And I'm just going to tuck this into my crease. Like I'm not gonna be loose and put it all over. I'm just gonna keep it really tucked into my crease, just for some more definition and just to bring out my eye shape even more. Again, okay, nice and soft and understated. Those are like things you wanna keep in mind if you're trying to come up with a makeup look that is going to complement a bright, bold red lipstick. Keep everything else on your face understated. That way your red lipstick has a chance to really shine and be like the star. So now I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. This one's a 234 Luxe Smoky Shader from Zueva. It's basically, it's just like a 239 for MAC, which is why I love it. And I'll be dipping into that same first shade that we used in the crease. And like always, anytime I do crease colors, I always bring those crease colors down to my bottom lash line just to really balance out the eye makeup look. And then dipping into that second shade right next to it. Switching to another small brush. This one's from Morphe. It's a M213 brush. It's tiny. And I'm going to dip into that lightest highlighting shade. And I'm only gonna use this shade in my tear duct. Next up is mascara. I'll be using the YSL Lash Clash Mascara. There's really nothing that complements a red lipstick more than glowy skin, neutral, fresh eyes, and beautiful lashes. So I have a really fun pack of individual lashes and I'm gonna try my hardest to find the link to these. And I'll be using the Ardell Lash Grip. This is a brush on clear lash glue. I love this one. I'm gonna start with, I think, this second row from bottom. 
but I found these while searching Amazon for just different individual lashes. I'm always trying to find different lashes, especially or tools and you know things like that, like makeup products. But I came across these. I think they were like 11 bucks for the pack. They also came with glue and a set of tweezers, which I'm not gonna be using. But anyway, I thought they looked so cool. So we'll be trying these out. And I think they're gonna give like the perfect, like wispy kind of spiky look, which is what I'm going for with this lash look. Lashes are on. I just did a coat of mascara on my bottom lashes, but in the meantime, I'm gonna grab one of my favorite highlighters of all time. This highlighter is insanely amazing. It's the Dior Universal Backstage Face and Body Glow. I'll be taking this and I'm gonna take it on the top of my hand. I already have some of that cream blush on the top of my hand, which is totally fine. You can leave that there. But I'm going to add this to the top of my hand I'm gonna grab the clean end of my beauty sponge and tap that into my sponge. And then very carefully, because you have to be careful when you're, because I already put my powder on under my eye, which it's also like a little bit on my cheek as well. So very carefully, I'm going to tap this highlighter onto my cheekbone. And it is like liquid gold, not literally gold, but like, it's like, it's, it's just amazing. This stuff is so stunning on. So I'm going to bring this highlighter almost in like a C shape around here. So top of my cheekbone, bringing it up around my temple to the top, like the very boniest top of my forehead right here. So this C shape right here. That's where I'm going to highlight. No, this is your brow bone. No, I'm talking about this. Mm-hmm. Did you not see? No, I did not see. My husband just tried to correct me and say that he, he's like the brow bone. I'm like, no, that's not the brow bone. He thinks he's an expert because he sits here every week and he watches me do makeup. He's close, but. <laughs> <laughs> He's close, but he's uh, still got a lot to learn. So we're gonna take it up over on top of my, my beautiful self tanning mistake around my temple. And then taking a little more, I'm gonna squeeze my sponge to make it slightly smaller, more narrow. And I'm going to hit the highest point of the bridge of my nose. So like right between my brows, that's one of my favorite places to highlight, period. It's so beautiful there. I'm gonna avoid the center of my nose because I don't want to be like a landing strip of glow. I want to be balanced. So I'm gonna skip the center, cut to the tip of my nose, and then highlight the top of my chin. And we're glowing. We are glowing and we are ready almost for our red lipstick. Okay, so before we move on to lipstick, which is our final step, I'm gonna use a liquid liner and I'm gonna opt to use a dark brown liquid liner instead of like a traditional black. I'll be using the Fly Liner Liquid Liner from Fenty Beauty. This is in the color Big Truffle or it's called In Big Truffle. Like instead of In Big Trouble, it's In Big Truffle. I'm gonna shake this first so it's nice and wet and ready to go. <laughs> so I can't talk and do this at the same time, so I'm just going to get in there. So what I'm gonna do is just draw my initial line, and then after this is dry, I'm going to just kind of connect it just a little bit. I don't want this to be a full-on wing liner. I don't want that look for this specific tutorial. I want it to be very delicate, very thin, and almost the idea of it, I almost want to look like an extension of my false lashes. So that's it, that's gonna be it. Really thin, really delicate, really understated. It's not gonna take over this whole makeup look. So now I already did on this eye, but I'm gonna add a touch of this liner 
on my, I'm gonna draw as thin as possible on the inner part of my lash line. And now I'm gonna get into the whole point of this video, which is the star of the show, the red lipstick. And I'm gonna show you my favorite ways to apply a red lipstick. So going back to my foundation brush, it already has a little bit of leftover foundation on it. This is the perfect shape that your brush should be in. Like it, ha it should have some old, not old, but like from your makeup application, it should have a little bit of that foundation left over on it. That is like primed and ready to go. So we're gonna take that leftover foundation on our brush and I'm gonna go over my lips and just stipple it on. It'll give your red lipstick, whatever the formula is, so much more longevity and it will really prevent feathering of the color. So you won't have to worry about that, that feathering happening with your lip line. With most red lipsticks, that happens if you don't do a lip line or if you don't properly prep your lips beforehand. So highly recommend you do this step before you apply your red lipstick. But now jumping back over to our e.l.f. putty bronzer, I'm gonna take this with a flat shader brush I'm gonna dip into it and just pre-contour my lips and enhance them and bring out the shape of them even before I do my lip liner. So I'll be taking this and shading right underneath my bottom lip, creating more of a shadow, like more depth and more shadow. And like I mentioned earlier too, like that e.l.f. cream bronzer, it's so natural, it's so sheer, it's not gonna give me a whole ton of pigment so it's not going to be super obvious that i have a bronzer shade around my lip so you can see too if i lift up my lip that's where i'm depositing this color i'm just creating the illusion of a fuller bottom lip so now moving on to the top i'm going to I'm gonna fill in my Cupid's bow. Moving on to a lip liner, I'll be using such a classic. This is, if you're a makeup artist or a makeup lover, you will definitely recognize this lip liner. This is Cherry from MAC. And when I think of a classic red lip, this is like iconic. This is like an iconic lip liner if you're doing a red lipstick, so. I'll be lining my lips with this first. So I just lightly filled in just a little bit on the inside of my lips. And just by doing this, it's just giving me a nice secure base for my lipstick to live on top of. And especially with that powder technique and the foundation and then doing the lip liner just kind of on top of or inside the lip as well, you're just really making sure that your lipstick, whatever formula you choose to put on top is going to stay put. And so, I think that's just so important to take into consideration when you're using a red lipstick. You don't want to be that person that has like that messy 
red lipstick that's like, you know, in the crease of your mouth and it's feathery now and it's on your teeth and it's in all the places you don't want it to be. Red lipstick can be super challenging and super intimidating, I think. And I'm sure many people agree with me for those reasons. And so by just taking the time to really prep your lips and kind of like prime them in a sense, you're just ensuring that your lipstick, your red lipstick is going to look flawless for so, so long. I mean, if I did this and I'm wearing red lipstick, I can still eat, I can still drink, I can still talk. I can wear it for a majority of my day and I know it's going to look great. It's not gonna be feathering and looking like a mess and you don't want that. With red lipstick, you don't want it to be a mess. That's like the last thing you want. So with that said, Moving on, I'm gonna use a liquid lipstick formula like I mentioned earlier. That is my favorite formula to use when I'm applying or wearing, especially personally, if I'm wearing a red lipstick, I want to be a liquid lipstick because I like the feeling of them. I know not many people do, but I will say if you don't love the feeling of a liquid red lipstick, this one from Dior, it's like a little bit more on the pricey side, but it's worth it. Like, you know, Usually we don't wear red lipstick every single day if we're wearing it, so it's more of like a special occasion. So I say treat yourself and invest in a good quality, like more like luxurious red lipstick. You know, I'm not saying that cheap ones are bad, but if you're gonna wear one, like like maybe treat yourself to a nice formula. And this is a great, great formula and not to go on a whole tangent about it, but I like this one because it doesn't feel like a dry, heavy, cakey liquid lipstick, so. This is not mine, this is in my professional makeup kit. So I'll be taking this out and just scooping it onto a spatula. So using another flat, small shading brush. This one is from Youngblood Cosmetics. It's the YB13 brush. And I'm gonna start in the center of my lips and work my way out. Okay. This is such a classic red color. Like it's a classic red. It's a more of like a traditional, like almost like pinup style like a 50s kind of red, you know, like that blue undertone red, the kind of blue undertone red that makes your teeth look extremely white, which is such an added bonus. And I'll make sure I link this exact red, but it's the, the shade is 999. just such a nice thin liquid lipstick like thin it's not like a thick texture where it feels goopy and kind of gross it feels really nice and almost like sheer And then by looking up, this is gonna look awkward, but if I look up, I can see the inside of my lip and I'm able to get any errors that I missed. And there is a trick if you feel like maybe you messed up and you went too far into your mouth. If you take a Q-tip and you go like this, takes off the excess and that's usually the excess that gets onto your teeth. So just a little trick if you feel like you got too close to the inside of your mouth where it's gonna get onto your teeth, just grab a Q-tip, do that and you're good to go. So now I'm gonna take a step back, close my mouth and I'm gonna see if my lips are even. So I need to just clean up this area right here and that area right there. So grabbing a flat, this is a 241 precision smudger brush. And so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna clean up the top first, so. And then I'm gonna get this little corner right here. Another trick I'm just gonna point out. So let's say you're using this technique where you know you had to clean up just one side of your mouth, you have to even it out. So whether this side needs 
to be cleaned up or not. It actually does not need to be cleaned up, but since I did lay a slightly brighter concealer on the side of my mouth, I need to even it out and balance it. Again, just so it's even out. Okay, so this is gonna dry down. It's gonna be long wearing. It's gonna stay put. I feel so comfortable on my lips and it's just such a pretty red color. I think this color is just so universally flattering. Like it looks good on everyone. So this is the finished look. This is what I love to pair with a bold red lipstick. someone who struggles with what to wear makeup wise with a red lipstick, I really hope you find this tutorial helpful. I know this is like one of my favorite looks. It's classic, it's still glowy, the skin is still showing through, the eyes aren't super dramatic, which is what I really like the most with when I'm pairing like an eye makeup look with a red lipstick. Keep the eyes more understated, focus on some really pretty wispy lashes that are not too dramatic and over the top. And then it just, it's a perfect compliment for a red lip because it lets the red lip be the star of the show, which is the whole point. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you guys like this look, if you try it on yourself, or tell me too in the comments what you like to pair with a red lipstick. I would love to hear from you guys. As always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.